things and laugh and enjoy each other's uh, company again and, and uh, what a joy it is to be able uh, to do so. If you will bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, as we come again before you, we praise you, Father, we exalt you. Father, you are wonderful and, and you bless us so much. Father, we are so thankful for all that you have given us, Father, the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Father, we are thankful for your word, which shows us the path we should follow, the way unto heaven, Father. We pray that we will look at these things, study them, apply them to our lives, and live accordingly, Father, that we may share them with others, that they may come to know you as well, Father, that they might be saved. We pray these things humbly in Christ's most precious and holy name. Amen. Well, so speaking of joking and laughing and carrying on, uh, there was some discussion uh, there at the potluck about the Super Bowl ads. And uh, if you uh, are paying any attention, you know that some people, that is the focus. That's the whole thing of the Super Bowl is to see these ads. And, and they come up each year with some of the craziest ads. Uh, I saw some of them, and, and they have, they, they really came up with some weird, I will say, some weird and strange uh, ads on there. I'll not try to describe them. I'm sure many of you saw them and, and are, have heard about them. Some were reported on the news afterwards, talking about some of the most quote-unquote popular ideas, least popular. Uh, this isn't a Super Bowl ad, but perhaps you've seen it. I've seen or seen them. There's different ones. There is a siding company. I don't remember the name of it. A siding company, I guess, up around Kansas City, I, Columbia, somewhere. I don't know. But uh, where this this older man, he he's talking. He's apparently been in business for a long time, and he has this way at the end about call now, and he really stresses that, brothers and sisters. I hate that commercial. Uh, I, I, I do. I I can't. It just irritates me hearing him do that. Uh, but I guess it's something that he thinks, at least, that he values. It must be working for him, uh, you know, for his business. So I appreciate for him. That's good. But I, I don't care for it myself. But I can't help but thinking of that. And, and we talk, when we go through lessons, and we, we talk about different things, there's as I've used this phrase before, these do's and don'ts about what we are, uh, ex what's expected of us uh, in order to do and, and not to do. And uh, We talk about the, the plan of salvation and, and of course in a few moments we'll be giving a, an invitation to obey the gospel. We talk about the need to be faithful and as we uh, address this morning looking uh, at Revelation 2 and verse 10, the need to be faithful unto death, and, and, and all these different things. The Bible is, is and, and I hesitate to put it this way, but in a sense, it is a book of do's and don'ts, things that are uh, supposed to be carried out, things that we are not to do, and, and we know uh, when we fail to do them, we, we think of uh, 1 John 3 and verse 4, that uh, when we transgress the commandments of God, when we transgress the law of God, we are sinning. When we fail to do that which we know is good, James 4 and verse 17, we are sinning. We see text. Uh, I've had... Some point out to me that perhaps my favorite text is it's really not, but it is one of those texts I like. It's Mark 16, verse 16. You know, um, well, 15 and 16. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Uh, of course, paraphrasing, not getting 
quote exactly the way it's worded, but uh, we think of those things, brothers and sisters. And as much as I don't like that advertisement, we need to have that attitude when we when we think about that. He he has that attitude. You know, call now and. and and he stresses that. He stresses now. Brothers and sisters, when we study the Bible, we ought to have that urgency about being obedient to God, being obedient to uh, the gospel uh, that we might be saved, being faithful, doing the things that a Christian is to do. We, we think of texts such as Proverbs 27 and verse 1. Proverbs 27 and verse 1, which says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We need to realize, and James uh, points this out in James chapter 4, that truly <coughs> life is brief, and, and we don't know what tomorrow may bring. In James chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy, and sell, and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. And he would go on to say in uh, verses 15 and following for that you ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. And then, of course, as we have already alluded to in verse 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Life is brief, brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter how old we are, how young we are. Life is brief. We may have another year, another 10 years, another 40 or 50 years, or even longer. Uh, there are some in here who may live uh, many, many years. Uh, we stop and think about some of those who are here, and, and hopefully they will live, and all of us, each of us, will enjoy a long life. There are some here who, who very easily could live another 70, 80 years. But those years are brief. And we certainly aren't, care, uh, aren't promised that those years uh, will be there for us. It, there are people who live to be, as some might put it, to a ripe old age. And there are those, and I've known those, who have died at very young ages. And so we need to be aware of that, that life is brief. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, Paul here writing says, when then as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in, the, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We don't need to put off obeying the gospel making things right if we have transgressed God's law, if we have disobeyed Him, if we have not been what He would have us to be. Because indeed, life is brief, brothers and sisters. Life passes us by, and it does so in a hurry. I have said this on various occasions, that the older I get, the faster it seems to be going. It seems like just yesterday I was in high school. Just yesterday... I was in college, we were talking, some of us were talking about college, and it seems like just yesterday I was in college. I graduated from college in 1998. It's been a while. It wasn't just yesterday. And, and that time just has flown by. In, in 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 14, Remember these words. For we must needs die and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither doth God respect any person, yet doth he devise means that his 
Banished be not expelled from him. Brothers and sisters, friends, we need to realize again that indeed, as we've seen, life is brief. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And I want to encourage those who are here, if you're here and have not obeyed the gospel, I want you to think on these things. That life is brief. And that you, you, no matter your age, whether you're old, whether you're young, that you aren't promised tomorrow. And just as that advertisement uh, that we alluded to says, you know, paraphrasing, you know, obey the gospel now, as he puts it. I don't do it as well as he does, but, you know. Or if you're here and you're, you know, and of course the Bible tells us, we, we know, I, I know that all of us know what the Bible teaches one must do in order to be saved, that we must hear the word of God, believe in Christ as the Son of God, repent of one's own sins, confess Christ to be the Son of God and be baptized, immersed in water for the remission of one's sins. The Bible teaches that that's something that we must do in order to be saved. And now is the day of salvation. Now is that accepted time. Now is the opportunity you have. And it may not come again. Or maybe you are here and you are a Christian. Maybe you have not been what you need to be. <clears throat> again, we may think, I've got plenty of time to fix things. I've got plenty of time to make things right with God. But now may be your one and only chance. Now may be your last chance. You might have many, many opportunities, but why take the chance? He's promised if you're faithful to confess your faults, He's faithful to forgive you. And in eternity is a long time to, to say, I wish I'd taken care of that. So if you're here and you have need, please don't put it off. Please obey now. And we want to stress now. You know, obey now. Make things right now. Whatever the case may be, if we can be of assistance, please come while we stand and while we sing. Jesus, my heavenly King, of me I know. Praises to you, my soul.